So in this quick episode, we're going to look at the interpersonal skills or common factors that go across a range of psychotherapeutic interventions and the ones that in particular are important within low intensity CBT. So common factors then are the factors that contribute to outcomes across different modalities of psychotherapy. So across all therapy modalities, these are shared factors that are said to contribute. Um, specific factors, on the other hand, are factors that are found specifically within one modality and not within others. So, for example, within CBT, the here and now structure would be a specific factor of that approach. And then we have all the other psychotherapies all have specific factors that are unique to their modality type of therapy. So the literature talks about common factors and specific factors in terms of what they contribute to outcome. And for many years, it's been said that common factors are the most important thing. And we'll look at that critically today together. Within low intensity CBT, the national curriculum defines five key common factors. The first of those is establishment of relevant expertise. And this one's all, all um, often forgotten. And it's a really important one in terms of how you introduce the yourself to the patient right from the first session of an assessment through to your information giving and showing your expertise in understanding um, options that can help with the patient whilst recognising they are the expert in terms of their own problem areas and their own unique experience of those problems. The next is a clear agenda or introduction and making sure that actually the introduction is there to engage the patient and is done in a clear, succinct and calm way to bring down any affect that might be present. And thirdly, we have a positive non-judgmental attitude, but also cultural competence is a really key important factor across therapeutic interventions. So being able to work with people from a range of different backgrounds. Similarly, we have non-verbal competencies such as eye contact and posture, which are known to be really important. If you think about how disengaging it can be if somebody isn't looking at you when talking to you um, in a in a one-to-one -one session, if you know they're writing notes and not looking at you as you're saying really emotive content, that can be really disengaging. And similarly, how we sit and our posture and how we sit in a chair is a really important part. And then we have our verbal competencies. So in terms of you know reflecting back what the person has said to check understanding, paraphrasing things that have been said to summarize them and pull together and phrase our next question using empathic statements, and we'll look at empathy in more detail and some of the latest meta-analytical research in that regard, and also factually accurate reassurance and funneling. And funneling is a key skill within PWP, as we know. So factually accurate reassurance is an important one in terms of giving reassurance is important if it's factually accurate and once. What we don't want to do is get into a disengaging habit where we might be contributing to maintenance of difficulties by allowing frequent reassurance to veer into either inaccurate information to try and make somebody feel better or similarly giving accurate reassurance too often, too frequently that it becomes a safety seeking behaviour rather than helping that person manage their affect at that time appropriately. We know there are factors that are really important for engagement, including being able to disengage. And in the short term nature of CBT, both at step two and step three, being able to disengage appropriately without rep, um, without rupturing the therapeutic relationship is really important. So, as I alluded to, there's lots in the literature over the years in terms of common factors and how important they are. And many modalities post on this frequently in the literature. But one of the things that's really important to note is that the research quality on those can be very poor. So when we look across common factor literature, we really need to understand more about whether the research has been conducted in a way that has managed for other effects that could be taking place in terms of the outcome. So the specific factors um, and individual therapist factors. And so a lot of the research that's been done is poorer than others. So 
There's been reviews done for a number of years, meta-analytical reviews in terms of looking at outcomes. Um, and if we look at the effect sizes here, although it suggests contextual factors like empathy, alliance, positive regard, goal consensus, congruence or genuineness, therapist effect, are, have larger effect sizes. Not all the research shows in the same way. So within good studies such as this by um, Wampold, um, it's very clear that common factors are important and we need to give them attention, but they're certainly not the only factor. So those alone aren't sufficient to get patients well. And for years, many, um, modalities used to posit that actually this is what made the difference alone and we know that's not the case there are specific factors within the modality that are really important that we have therapist adherence to within that uh, specific factor modality and these are then important to wrap around that but not sufficient by themselves and if we look at one of the latest well-conducted uh, meta-analytical reviews um Pim Kuiper's career is spent doing very, very, very high quality uh, meta-analytical research across a range of psychotherapeutic subjects. So, you know, he is probably one of the, the best in his field at doing these types of reviews. And this paper, um, which was published online in 2019 in the annual Revel uh, in Psychology Journal, um, the annual review of clinical psychology is, um, an interesting paper in that they've really studied the qualities of other reviews to date and they've looked at whether they are good enough quality to actually come to a consensus and rightly they've pointed out that because it's very hard to control between a common factor and the other things happening at the same time most of the research has been quite poor most of the research hasn't controlled in a suitable way, and most of it is really not able to come to a conclusion, or the conclusions that they've come to have been quite wide leaps. So currently, that there are no common or specific factors that meet the criteria in an empirically validated way. So therefore, it's still unknown that you know, whether therapies work through common or specific factors or both at the time of this review. So we know that both seem to be important, but certainly one in alone isn't enough, which, you know, if, if we look at the high quality literature, we can see that pattern time and time again. And we need to start separating out common factors, one from the other in terms of that research as well. And both these papers do look at that in terms of one therapeutic factor or one common factor might be a stronger mediator than another um, towards outcome. So we need to learn more about the individual and the group collective basis of common factors on outcome. And many of you will see me refer to this paper before by Michael Eubank and colleagues in JAMA. And this is a, it's a huge sample of 90,000 hours of CBT transcript. And they've looked at the factors that are associated both with reliable improvement, but also with engagement from a first session. And I've highlighted the really important bits here in terms of from a first session, a change method from the very first session is the largest thing that favors improvement. So it's a really important factor. So that's why in all my teaching, it's about front loading a change method, being clear about what the change methods are rather than scaffolding, scaffolding techniques and knowing what a therapeutic dose of that change method is. Similarly, therapeutic thanks is really important and getting feedback and setting homework and giving therapeutic praise. And then when we look at what factors are highly favoring improvement in terms of um, all sessions, it's therapeutic praise, planning for the future, it's setting an agenda is really important, but often not well done within step two and step three at all times. It's about eliciting and giving feedback, reviewing homework, and making sure that actually things are done really well in that regard across all of those items. Whereas when we look further down, the things that start to favor non-improvement, 
empathy in both cases is low. So what that means is it might be that there are specific types of empathy required and others are non-favorable. So that might be specific to CBT rather than other forms of therapy who've looked at empathy more globally and generally in terms of empathic statements. The empathic statements that appear here to be better correlated with favoring improvement are therapeutic praise, therapeutic thanks. Again, therapeutic praise becomes really important once homework steps in across all sessions. Perceptions of change, so helping the patient feel that um, hope is possible. And we know that's really important in terms of patients get as well as we predict. And we want to ensure that they feel hopeful that the treatment can benefit them so they engage with it well. And similarly, risk checks can be um, negatively uh, favoring non-improvement. But again, they're essential. They're a core item, they can't be left. The how that's done within a therapeutic relationship becomes really important. So again, the interesting literature on common factors shows that these are probably important things, but we're learning more about them all the time. And certainly we're learning a lot more than perhaps the start of the IAP programme through good quality, large scale research such as this. So within PWP and CBT practice, we need to get much better at making sure that we're understanding the patient's problem that we're using a change method from the first session, that we're setting homework, and that we're using therapeutic thanks and praise at the right optimal times, and that we're helping patients plan for a future that they feel hopeful of. So all of those things alongside agenda setting are really, really important. And some of the things, even as specific factors within CBT, like Socratic questioning, we thought were really important, are important, definitely. But without the praise of having done things and sharing things without actually that sense of optimism and hope, they may be less important than we thought. So certainly within common factors, the best way to think about your common factor skills is to reflect on them, get feedback from peers and supervisors who sit in on sessions. It can be really useful to record your sessions and watch them back and rate your common factor skills. And certainly that's something that I get trainees to do on the programmes that, that I deliver. Um, and then take some time to look at and define those skills in terms of times when you might identify that you do them well and times when you know that you might do them less well according to the patient or the situation and try and understand what might be going on there in terms of is it a therapy interfering belief or behaviour that might be at play? such as, you know, I should get everybody well, I shouldn't make people upset, I shouldn't make people feel worse, because actually the very nature of the interventions we're doing might initially give them some symptoms back and make them do things that they've been avoidant of for a long time to actually come out the other side. So as clinicians being able to tolerate that distress is a really important part to help patients get well. So if we do self-identify any of those therapy interfering thoughts or behaviours, taking those to clinical skills supervision, using self-practice, self-reflection, and things like the um, book by uh, James Bennett Levy and Richard Thwaite, the self-practice, self-reflection workbook, all of those things are really important in terms of ensuring that irrespective of how important these things are to outcome alongside the specific factors, they are important as the specific factors are, and we need to be reflecting on them, we need to be practicing on them, we need to be honing our skills on them, and all the time refining as scientists, practitioners in terms of our ability to engage with patients and our ability to also use techniques on ourselves to work on any blockages or therapy interfering beliefs and behaviors that we might have that might be detrimental to the patient um, therapeutic relationship. Follow us for more on any of our channels and um, we will have more in the series soon.